Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to make this fabulous sideboard or buffet and this was requested by one of our subscribers. It's not an exact reproduction of the photograph that was sent in but I've sort of simplified the design a little bit. It's got this lovely moulding along the back but that is optional. You can just have the flat worktop if you wish. So the cut-in list is in the description box below and coming up next is a list of all the tools and materials you'll need and then we'll get started. We're going to begin by attaching the side mouldings to the side pieces. So I've got here some glue which I've dispensed onto a piece of card. I'm using a cocktail stick to apply it with. And I've also got here a spare piece of 5mm strip wood, but it doesn't matter what size. It's just a spare piece of strip that I'm going to use to push the mouldings against the top of each piece. So that's handy to have. And then I've got my um, clothes pegs or clothes pins ready here as well, which I'm going to use to secure the mouldings once they're glued in place. So begin by applying glue to the back of the moulding and I always begin just by having a look at the moulding and I like to attach it so the neatest side is facing upwards. So if you've got any little nicks in the wood or little marks on the wood that you don't want showing then attach those so they're facing downwards. That's a good habit to get into as well. So attach that along the top of the side piece just put it in place there like that and then you can bring in your spare piece of strip and just push both pieces up towards it and that way you'll ensure that you're getting a nice flush line along that top edge so I'm just pushing them both against it have a spare cocktail stick ready to remove your excess glue and then you can attach the bottom moulding Again, just check in there to see which is the nicest side. Attach that along the bottom edge. Again, push them against your spare piece of strip. Remove that excess glue. Very important to remove the excess, especially if you're going to be varnishing or wood dye in the piece, because varnish and wood dye won't take over glue residue. You can always sand um, again after the glue has dried, but it's always best just to remove it while it's still tacky. You'll get more of it off then. And then once they're in place, you can clip those into place using pegs or clamps. I just use pegs because I've got so many of them and they hold nice and tightly as well and then that can be put to one side to dry and then the same thing again with the remaining side piece okay so whilst our side pieces are drying we can prepare the back piece and I've just got a longer piece of strip wood there so we can do the same thing again with those top and bottom mouldings. And we're going to begin by drawing a line down the shortest edge of the piece. 43 millimetres or 1 and 11 sixteenths of an inch from the left hand edge. So just make a little pencil mark at the top and bottom. 43 millimetres, 1 and 11 sixteenths of an inch. Turn the piece, place the rule just below the pencil lines and that's just to allow for your pencil nib. Join those up, just pop that back over there and then begin by attaching the top moulding. Bring in the central moulding 
and again just choosing the nicest edge there apply glue to the back and then you want to place this so it sits just to the right of that pencil line but so that you're just covering the pencil line so position that down there like that and the edge of it is just hiding that pencil line press it into place and then the bottom moulding will sit along there and I'm just checking I've got enough left there sometimes if these bits are a little bit too long or a little bit too short you'll either have gapping or you won't be able to get this one on so if you've done that you've already stuck that one into place you can just shave a little bit off there with your craft knife if you need to And if you've cut it a little bit too short, then just place the bottom moulding along the bottom edge and then you can just use a little bit of filler if there's too much gap in. But remember this is at the back of the unit, so it won't be visible. And I like to use mouldings because it's actually supporting the piece, so it's adding a bit of strength to the piece. Which again is important if you're using the 1.5mm wood which I like to use because it's more to scale for 12th scale and then again bring in the clothes pegs or your clamps pop one in the middle along the top of that central moulding I'm just going to pop some in the gaps on this one as well I like to include as many clamps as I can and it's always important to secure mouldings because as the glue begins to dry, the pieces of wood will curl upwards and they'll dry like that, so do always secure them. And once again, that can be left to dry, and then we'll move on to the next stage. Once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove your pegs and then just sand each side of each piece. So with your sandpaper flat on your worktop, keep the piece in an upright position and just sand along in the one direction and I've actually already done all of these pieces and that will just ensure you've got a nice straight edge along each edge of each piece. You can pop your back piece to one side and we're now going to attach a leg to each side of each side piece. So just lay those there like that and then apply glue to each side of each side piece. Pop that back down on your worktop and then we're going to attach them so the top of each piece is flush. So press the side piece against the leg, bring the other leg in and then I'll just grab a spare piece of strip again and you can use that again just to make sure that everything's flush along that top edge. So press it all up towards the strip, pressing it together at the same time, making sure as well that it's flat against your work surface. The thing you don't want to happen is for the legs to sort of tilt inward slightly because then you won't be able to get a nice square piece once we start construction. So just press it all flat. Hold that together for a moment. Have your um, spare cocktail stick handy just in case you get any sort of glue seeping out there. Didn't apply too much, so there's not too much seepage. And then just very carefully push that piece along your worktop to dry. And you've heard me say this before, but it's better just to slide it along like that rather than try and pick it up or it might just fall apart. Same with the other side piece. Okay, so whilst those side pieces are drying, we're going to begin marking up the rest of the pieces prior to construction. So I've got the back piece here, so place it moulding side down on your work surface. And we're going to begin by doing a pencil line 25 millimetres, and that's 63 64 of an inch from each edge. So begin by doing a little uh, pencil mark at the top edge. And then one at the bottom edge. And normally
normally I would round up that 63 64 of an inch measurement because um, it is just a, a fraction off one inch but I didn't want it then to affect the size um, of that central opening where you've already cut your shelf piece but if you want to round that up to one inch if you work in inches then do so but just bear in mind you may need to just shave a little bit off that central shelf and also the central drawer um, sizes in the cutting list will just be slightly different but it is just um, 1 64th of an inch um, so it is just going to be a, a tiny tiny difference but I work in millimetres but if you work in inches obviously that's that's entirely up to you if it makes it easier for you. So place the rule just below those pencil marks to allow for the thickness of your pencil nib and join them up and then keeping it that way around we're now going to do a pencil line all the way across for our shelf piece and that is going to be 18 millimetres 45 64ths of an inch from this top edge. So again, just do your little pencil line at each edge of the wood. 18 millimetres, 45 64ths of an inch. And then join that up. Now we want to make a line just in this central area and that will be for that uh, central shelf there and that is going to be I'm just I'm I'm looking away because I'm just looking in in my notebook to see where I put the measurement so turn it around again and then we're going to do the line at 23 millimeters from this line at 23 millimeters do your little mark again and that is and that's 29 30 seconds of an inch and our shelf will sit above this little pencil line when we come to construct everything and then you want to bring in the two divides you've got those three sort of smaller pieces there so the smaller bit or the shorter bit there is your um, central shelf so put that to one side so on these two divides we're going to draw the line across the piece so against the direction of the grain so turn them around to start and again this is going to be so 23 millimeters 29 30 seconds of an inch from what will become the top edge so this will sit um, in the unit with the grain from top to bottom so we're doing the pencil line across the piece so we're going just under halfway and that's so the shelf can sit above the pencil line and then also just do that line onto the front and back edge of the piece and I didn't do it on that one so I'll just do it again and this is just when the pieces are in situ it's a lot easier then to have a look and see that the shelf is lined up so they can then go back up there we're now going to bring in the top the bottom and the shelf piece and the shelf piece is in the thicker sheet wood and we're going to do that 25 millimeter line again from each edge And again, if you want to round that up to one inch, if you're working in inches, then please do so. Again, join the line and continue it onto the front and back edge of the piece. And then we're going to do that same thing again with the top and bottom pieces. So 25 mil from each edge, 63 64 of an inch, or one inch if you're going to round it up. Join the line and continue onto the front and back edge of the piece.
then bring back in your side pieces and we're going to do that pencil line again 18 millimeters or 45 64 of an inch from the top edge so put that one to one side so do a little pencil mark there and then when I'm marking up the side pieces I tend not to go onto the leg so I will just do the pencil line in between those two pieces just on that side piece and that's just because once the piece is constructed it's very difficult to then erase that pencil mark off of the back leg once you've got the back piece sitting there as well so just do it on the side piece just in the middle there same on the other piece again 18 millimeters 45 64 of an inch I tend to remember some inch measurements um, you know the millimeter inch conversion quite easily but some I just have to keep checking <laughs> and 18 millimeters is one of them so that's all of the pieces now marked up so bring back in your shelf piece which is the thicker piece of wood the 2.5 millimeter thick sheet and we're going to drill a hole for where the pin hinge will go so we want to do it if you turn the piece onto its side and imagine this will become the front edge we want to do it two millimeters back from the front edge so just do a little pencil line like that and two millimeters is five sixty fourths of an inch and then turn the piece again and then we want to come in 1.5 millimeters along that line Get the ruler lined up there and that's 1 16th of an inch and then you can just do your little pencil dot just make sure you're on that 2 millimeter line and come in by 1.5 1 16th of an inch I've got a 0.75 millimeter bit in my pin drill. And that's one thirty second of an inch. And then drill the hole. And sometimes I do this once the pieces are in situ, um, but it is easier to do drill your holes before you've put the pieces into place. With the exception of the bottom piece because once we've done the doors we'll fit we'll sort of dry fit them and then we'll be able to make an exact mark of where our hole should go in the bottom of the unit and that way you get a better pin hinge like that so that will become the front edge of your shelf piece we're now ready to begin construction and we're going to begin by attaching the back piece to one of the side pieces and it's going to sit just at the front of that back leg so just along the join there where the side piece joins the leg and your pencil lines will be lined up and therefore so will your top and bottom so apply glue to the side of the back piece sitting it right along that join and once the glue has dried off a little bit I'll pick that up and show you how that looks at the back so hold it as upright as you can and just press it into place I'm just going to grab a cocktail stick get rid of that excess glue and do get rid of the glue on the inside join as well because if that dries hard it creates like a little hard line and then the shelf or the bottom piece won't go back as far as it should as well as along the back of the unit and let's see if that's dry enough so you can see there it's sitting at the front of that back leg so you've got an overhanging little bit of leg at the back the same as at the side there You can then leave that in that upright position and we're going to put the top piece into place on the inside edge of the joined pieces 
like that, and so that the pencil lines are facing inward. So apply glue to that short edge and the long back edge. Position your side piece first and you want to make sure that it's sitting right at the top of that side piece. Like that. Use your finger to make sure you've got a nice flush top edge there. And then whilst you're holding it you can bring in that back piece, see how much it's actually, um, how far away it is from the top piece there. And you'll just pull it in and that's then squaring everything up. So again make sure you've got a straight edge or a flush edge along the top. Reach inside and just push it up a little bit if you need to. Press it all together. Again, come onto the inside and remove any excess glue. I'm then just going to let that piece dry off for a moment and a few people have asked when I say that how how long do I mean and I don't really time it but I would say certainly let it dry off for a minute or two and that doesn't mean that the glue will be completely dry because most glues will take quite a while to dry completely but a lot of glues have what's called a grab time and that just means that they they're dry enough that you can then continue to work with them without them falling apart and that's why I really like the Gorilla Glue because it does grab really quickly so just let it stand for a minute or two and then we can continue with the next step. Okay so now turn the piece onto the top like that and we're going to attach the draw divide. So apply glue to one long and one short edge and this is one of the pieces that in the cutting list I advise to cut with the shortest edge in the direction of the grain against the sort of general rule of doing the longest edge in the direction of the grain and that's just because the edge of the wood that runs with the grain is always a lot neater, you get a neater finish so anything that's facing forward with its shorter edge I always advise to cut um, this way around and this is going to sit on the inside edge of that line. So as we're looking at it here, it's going to sit to the left of that first line. So you can line it up along the top piece and then with that line on the back as well. And that should make sure it's sitting completely upright. We'll keep checking and manoeuvring if you need to. Check from the front as well, by eye, just to make sure that's sitting straight. Press that into place. And then the other one as well is sitting on the inside, so we'll come to the right of this second pencil line as we're looking at it. So again, apply glue to one long edge and one short edge. Just manoeuvring that into place. Press it down and I'm going to remove that excess glue again. That's just so we don't have trouble getting the drawers to fit in later on. And then bring in the shelf piece and remember we want the drilled holes to be towards the front edge. So the first thing to do is apply glue along the top of those divides important you remember that as you'll always have that gap in there and then along your back and side of the shelf piece and then just lay that on top of those divides Make sure it goes right into that corner and be quite gentle with it as well because you don't want to tip those divides. Press it against the divides as well and then what you can do is stand the piece up and just make sure 
that the divides are sitting on the inside of those little lines that we did on the front of the shelf as well and that will keep the drawer opening straight. Remove that excess glue. So then lay that piece back down and we're going to bring in one of the internal divides and again this is going to sit on the inside edge of that line so level with the draw divide above and this is another of those pieces that I advise to cut so that the shortest edge is in the direction of the grain and again for that same reason that the piece is deeper than it is taller and will look neater from the front edge. Like that. And then get it into position. Just have to turn it to get on the inside of that line. Push it right up into that corner. Again, you can just turn it and make sure that you're level with the draw divide above. Just need to move it over a fraction, I think. And that it's straight as well towards the bottom. Just trying to move it over a little bit. Like that. Your lines um, should be lining up and you'll actually have um, a sort of wider piece here at the top than you have at the bottom. So make sure you've got those this divide the right way around by making sure those lines are lined up. If you can see a line of glue there it's because I just fitted the shelf and realised I wasn't actually recording. So let's go again. So bring in your shelf piece and again this is um, another of the pieces where I advise to cut so that the grain is in the direction of the shortest edge, which is the edge which will be facing forward. And this is going to sit above that pencil line in the centre there. So apply glue to the side and back edge. And then line it up first along that back piece. So it's sitting just above that line. And then you can line it up along the side. Press it all together, make sure you're right into that corner and then you can look at it from the front again and make sure that the shelf is sitting above that little line that we did on the front of the divide there. I've got quite a bit of glue in there now, I'll just get rid of that, like that. We can now put the remaining divide into place. So begin by applying glue along the edge of that shelf piece, like that. And then again, you want the widest part, and it's only by a fraction, to be at the top there. And so that your line as well is on the inside. And this is going to sit just to the inside of that line again. So get it lined up on the back piece first and then you can press it against the shelf. Just turn it towards you again and make sure you're lined up with that draw divide above. You need to make sure you're right into that top corner or touching the shelf above as well really carefully press it all together. Okay so again I left that to dry off for a couple of minutes and we're now going to attach the bottom piece which will sit again on the inside edge of the joint pieces and so that the pencil lines are on the inside as well. So begin by applying glue along the bottom of those internal divides and then to the side and back edge bottom piece. Put that into place along the back first. Push it against the side. Use your finger to make sure you've got a flush edge along the bottom and make sure as well that you've pushed it right up against those divides.
push it all together. You can then look around the front and make sure that the divider is sitting just on the inside of those pencil lines. Remember that we continued onto the front edge of that bottom piece. Don't push up too high at the bottom there, or you'll sort of have like a bit of a ridge along the back edge, like that. Just check for your excess glue. We're now going to attach the remaining side piece. So apply glue along these edges. And I've already cut myself a little bit of masking tape, which I'll use to hold the pieces together. And then as the glue is drying, everything will remain square. So bring in that side piece and begin by lining up your top. And you should have a nice flush edge along the front of that leg. And again, that back piece should be sitting towards the front edge of that back leg. As long as you've got a flush edge along the front you should find that that's sitting where it should. So just use your finger there to make sure. Make sure you've got a flush edge along that bottom piece there. You don't want anything sticking out. I'm just going in and pulling it down towards the bottom of the side piece there. You can actually hold on to it while you remove that excess glue from the back. And then making sure it's all staying where it should. Have a look from the front as well just to make sure you're happy with where it's all sitting. That um, bottom shelf there, I don't know if you can see it there, is just slightly coming away from that divide. So I'm going to put some tape under there as well. And I'm going to put a couple of pieces straight across that side. My tape's gone all curly. It's sticking to itself. Piece straight over there like that. Pull it nice and tightly. I'll put another piece over there as well towards the back of the piece. And then just where that um, bottom piece isn't sitting straight up against those divides, I'm going to put a piece under there as well. Down like that and then push that up and secure it. It sort of looks okay there, but I think I'm going to do it that side as well. Just to make sure. So that piece can now be left to dry. Okay, so as always, I've advised in the cutting list not to cut the parts for the drawers until you've constructed the main unit. And that's just because any slight misplacement of the divides or the shelf will adjust the size of the drawer opening. So measurements are given in the cutting list, but use those just as a guide and then always just go through, remeasure the opening and resize the pieces if needed. And to do that, you want to measure width, height and the depth. And then you'll deduct half a millimetre, if that, from each of those measurements and then cut your pieces accordingly. Okay, so I've just cut pieces for the top three drawers. It's just to prevent having lots of pieces on the worktop. And then once these are constructed, I'll cut the pieces for the bottom two drawers. That just saves you from getting in a bit of a muddle with all the, the smaller parts. And then to actually construct, you want to begin by applying glue along each side of the base. Pop that piece back down on your work surface and then attach the side pieces. Make sure you've got a flush line along the front and back. So we've got a nice flush edge to join the front and back pieces to. I'm just going to grab my spare pieces of strip 
And I just find that using strip wood to press the sides up against the base really helps as you're getting an even pressure all the way along. Like that, and then you can just slide that piece along your worktop to dry. And we're just going to let that dry off while we do the other pieces and then we'll have a sturdy piece to pick up and attach the front and back pieces to. And then the final drawer. So I'll construct all of the drawers first and then we'll cut the parts for the drawer front mouldings because again if you've made any adjustments they'll also need to be adjusted. Slide that piece back over there and now I can move on to my first piece again. So apply glue on those front and back edges. Don't worry if your side pieces look as though they're not completely straight because we'll straighten those up when we attach the front and back pieces. A little bit more on there. Oops. Again, just pop that back down and attach the front and back. And you just want a nice flush edge along each side. So pull the sides up to meet the sides of the front and back pieces, and that will give you a nice square box. Carefully pick it up and you can just sort of jiggle it all into place. I'm just applying a little bit of pressure now to the front and back just to sort of squeeze it all together. And make sure the drawer bottom is sort of flat to your worktop as well. And again, that can then be left to one side to dry. And this time I'll leave that um, probably for about half an hour and I'll while I'm cutting the pieces for the other drawers and then I know it's completely dry and then I can sand it and fit it and make any adjustments if I need to. So I've constructed each of the drawers and a couple of those just needed a little bit of gentle sanding to get them to fit smoothly into the drawer openings and I've also cut the mouldings for the front of the drawers. Now I haven't given measurements in the cutting list for each piece but I've just advised to use a 0.8mm thick sheet wood and that's 1 32nd of an inch and then you just need to cut so that you've got a millimeter around each edge. So you would just measure the height of the drawer, take off two millimeters, I think that's five sixty-fourths of an inch from the height and the width. So you've just got that sort of border around each edge. And then for the drawer where we're having sort of two mouldings on the front, you would take off a millimetre, obviously from the height um, measurement, so two millimetres, so you've got a bit at the top and bottom, and then take off a further three millimetres or one eighth of an inch, so that again you've got that millimetre at either side and then in between to give us a bit of a gap there. And then we're going to bevel each edge of each moulding. Now because it's quite a thin wood, I'm going to do that in my hand rather than um, against the sandpaper on the desk. So you just want to hold it and then go along each edge at a 45 degree angle. So you're just taking off that sort of sharpness um, along the edge there. So do that around each edge. Work your way around so you've got a nice sort of even bevel and I'm going to do that with each piece including these two smaller pieces as well. Once you've shaped your mouldings they can be attached so just apply glue to the back of the moulding and I've got my clamps ready there or you could use clothes pegs, clothes pins and I'm just going to position these by eye so you're just leaving an even border around each edge into place, jiggle it about. I'm just going to use a 
spare cocktail stick to remove that glue that's seeping out. And then clamp it into position. You can normally fit a couple on like that. It's quite a narrow draw, but if you just angle them slightly, and on there like that, and then that can be left to dry. When you're fitting the mouldings to the wider drawer, if you just get the first one into position first, you've got that sort of millimetre border at the left hand edge. And again at the top and bottom. into position at the edge and then the same with the other one and then if you've cut them correctly you should have that same millimetre gap down the centre and if not you can just pretend that's how you wanted it to be <laughs> look from the front and then once you're happy Okay, you can clamp those into position. You can use masking tape as well for this, just put a piece really tightly straight over the front of the drawer. Just use your nail to crease it between the little gap there. Oops, apply glue to the drawer then. Okay, so once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove the clamps and we're now going to drill the holes for the draw knobs. Now I'm going to be using a wooden draw knob and it's got a 3mm 1 8 of an inch diameter there. But whether you use a wooden pull or um, you might want to use a brass pull or something like that, I'm going to use brass pulls on these two drawers and then wooden, along, wooden knobs along here. Um, and I'm also using brass pulls on the doors, but you could use brass pulls on all of the drawers or wooden knobs on all of the drawers or, or however you want to do it. You might have some nice beads you'd like to use, um, but if you're going to use a wooden knob they can be attached now, otherwise you can um, wait until after the piece is painted and then attach your brass pulls or whatever you're using. So to attach the um, wooden knob we're just going to begin by finding the centre of each drawer moulding. So just um, start by finding the centre across the width of the drawer moulding. Just do a little faint line and then you can find the centre across the height. And then you can do a little dot. And that's where you'll drill your hole. And I then just use an eraser just to get rid of the little line and your dot will stay there because you've actually gone into the wood. And then I've got my pin drill here and in there is a 1.6 millimetre drill bit and that's 1 16th of an inch. So if you've got a little set like this then it's probably the largest sized drill bit you've got in there. And these um, you can actually find in my Etsy shop and the drill. And I've also done a little um, tools video on these um, and the desk vice as well at the same time which you might find interesting and I'll link to that at the end of the episode. Okay so then you want to support the drawer um, with your finger and just drill down slowly keeping the drill as upright as you can. And then just because the little stem of the knob is slightly larger than um, the 1.6, I just give it a little jiggle like that just to make the hole slightly larger. And then I'll probably drill all the holes after this one, but I'll just show you just to apply a little bit of glue over the hole like that. And then just pop the little stem of the draw knob in. Okay, and you may have to jiggle it and then you want to push it so that the sort of little ridge um, underneath the draw knob is flat with the draw. And you'll probably have a little bit sticking through which you can just sand, sand back. Like so, 
just leave a nice flat bit in there. So when you're doing the one with the um, double mouldings, you want to find the centre of each moulding, so don't measure across the drawer, just measure the moulding. Again, do your little line up to find the width and then you dot to find the centre across the height. Do it there like that. And then the same on the other moulding. And these smaller rulers are ideal for doing things like this. The bigger one just sort of tumbles about and these six inch rules are really handy for smaller jobs. Measuring the insides of drawers for when you're measuring for your um, draw pieces. I've always got a, a six inch and a 12 inch rule in my desk tidy over there. the drawers are done you can cut the pieces needed for the doors and again I've given the measurements in the cutting list but do just measure the door opening and cut your piece accordingly um, just in case there is any difference um, in the size and you would just measure the height and the width and then from your three millimeter one eighth of an inch sheet you would just cut it half a millimeter if that shorter and narrower and then that will just allow um, the door to open and close more smoothly. And then I've written on mine left and right because there was just a slight um, half a millimetre difference in the size of my door openings. Um, just so I remember where they go. And we're going to begin by rounding off one long edge of each piece. Or rather the outer edge of each piece. So on my left hand door I'll round off the left hand edge and the right hand edge on the right hand door. So to do that, have your sandpaper on your flat on your worktop and then just sweep the piece towards you, bringing it into an upright as you do so. And you only need to do two or three sweeps. Maybe a couple of extra, just until it starts to round off like that and then you want to do the same on the back um, edge as well and I normally remember how many sweeps I've done and do the same amount again and then you'll get a nice even rounded edge so that's that one same with my right hand door And again, that just helps the um, door to open and close more smoothly. Once you've rounded off your door edges, you can cut the moulding for the front of the door. And you just want to, again, leave that border around all edges. But measure sort of from in front of the rounded part, because you don't want to be overlapping that part, or, or the door will just get stuck when you try and open and, and close it. So have a little border sort of between the moulding and then where the rounded bit starts and then equal border at the top and bottom again. I'm going to do the same thing again um, that we did with the draw mouldings and just round off each edge or bevel each edge rather with a small piece of sandpaper and again you can just do that in your hand just because it's such a fragile piece of wood. Once you've shaped the mouldings, you can attach them to the front of the door. And again, I've got my clamps ready. Again, just doing this by eye and leaving that even border around the edges there. Make sure it's straight. Get rid of your excess glue if you need to. And then you can clamp into place. And that can be left to dry. We're now ready to drill the hole in the top of each of the doors. So 
So I've got my desk vise here and I've just put a piece of kitchen towel in between the jaws of the vise, otherwise it tends to dent the wood. So fix the door in and secure it nice and firmly. And I've just changed the bit in my drill to a 0.75 millimetre bit and that's one thirty second of an inch. I'm trying to hold it there so you can see it. And we want to do the hole so it's in the centre of the thickness of the door and 1.5 millimetres or one sixteenth of an inch in from the rounded edge. So just take your smaller rule and you can just measure that out. So you just sort of do a line 1.5 millimetre in from the rounded edge and then you can turn the rule and find the centre and do a little dot there and that's where we're going to drill the hole. So put the drill bit over the top of your pencil dot, keep it as upright as you can and then drill down. And you want to go down by about six millimetres or a quarter of an inch. And a good way to check that is to take your dressmaking pins and then you can just pop one of those into that hole. Like that. Place your thumbnail at the top of the door and then pull it out and there you can see that's about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more, which is fine. And we're only going to drill the hole in the top for now and then we'll mark up the hole at the bottom of the door whilst it's actually slotted into the unit. So that's that one. So do the other one as well, exactly the same way. We're now going to drill a hole actually into the base of the unit, so turn it upside down over there and you want them to be again 1.5 millimeters back from the front edge of the base or of the bottom piece 1 16th of an inch and then the same distance in from that leg now I'm just going to make my measurement by eye but if you want to use your small rule then please do and that end as well Oops and then drill your hole again, I'm using that same 1 32nd of an inch 0.75 millimetre drill bit through like that that side as well and then turn it around and just slot your first door into place And I like my doors to be quite tight, so that actually is holding itself into place. But if yours are a little bit um, narrower, then you can sort of squeeze, take the top drawer out, and you can sort of hold it together by squeezing those two pieces together like that. And then take one of your dressmaking pins, and you're just going to insert that into the hole you've just drilled. And you're not trying to go through. Um, the wood of the door you just want it to sort of make a little a little mark in the base of the door there and then that's where we'll drill our hole so just sort of poke it in like that push it in until you can sort of feel resistance and then if you take that door out you'll see that we've made a little pin mark there to get that to focus but that's where we can then drill our hole um, again using the desk vise and then do the same with the right hand door okay so the main unit the drawers and doors are all now ready for paint and I've just put everything there onto my plastic tray and then once they're painted I just use that to sort of prop everything up whilst it dries. I'm just going to put that to one side and I want to prepare the top 
and then once I've done with the painting I can then just go ahead and use the wood die on my top piece and the moulding. So we'll start by preparing the top piece and all I want to do with this piece is just round over one edge, so just this top edge along the front and the sides of the piece and want to leave the back as a straight edge that we can then attach our moulding to. So to round them off, because it's a nice um, sturdy piece, 2.5 millimetre or 3 seconds of an inch thick, I'm going to do that against my um, sandpaper, to turn it that way, and I really just want to sweep it towards me and bring it into an upright position as I do so. So similar to how we rounded our door edges, but just going along a couple of times and you're just taking away that sort of sharp edge and it just gives a neater finish. So do that at the sides as well, like that. And then I just want to finish that off in my hand with a piece of fine grained sandpaper. And I'm just sand, very gently sanding the sides of the wood as well just to smooth that off. I'm just doing that very lightly because I don't want to take away from the width. But also because that edge runs against the direction of the grain, you need to make sure that that looks nice and smooth. And when you just concentrate on the front and the sides, I don't know if I can actually um, get the camera to focus in on that, but it gives you that nice little sort of curve over each corner. You've got like that little sort of shaped corner there without even having to do anything to it. And that gives a really nice detail to the top piece there. And then you just want to um, prepare that piece for your varnish or wood dye or even paint if you're just going to um, paint it the same colour as your unit, just by sanding all over the surface. To shape the moulding, cut a piece of paper to the same size as the piece of wood and then fold it in half and I just want to keep this really simple so just want to draw on there a sort of arch going from the top of the piece, shape it down and then I want to sort of arch it over I'm going to have to do it that way, arch it over into that corner as well. So just a really simple shape on there. You can sort of do what you like with your moulding, you can do a, you know, a nice curly pattern, but the simpler you keep it the better because then it will be easier to cut out um, from the wood. So I just want to cut that out. We're just making a template here. Open that out and then trace that onto your piece of wood. Make sure it's sitting in the centre there. Like that. You can then disregard the template. And then using a scribe tool, so a tool with a nice sharp pointed end. You just want to go over that pencil line, so you're just very lightly etching it or scoring it into the wood. And I find that by doing this first it helps the craft knife to stay on track. So I'm just holding the scribe really lightly. I'm not going too far into the wood. And you can go over that a couple of times. And then take your craft knife and it's good if you have a new blade in there for this. I've just changed the blade in mine. Get those scissors out of the way. In there. And then just really carefully go over that line again. So you're not trying to cut it out at this stage. 
but you're just scoring into the wood again and just making a sort of deeper score again do that a couple of times just take your time be really careful and always think about where your fingers are in relation to the blade same on the other side sort of come in from that top edge I'm in camera there. And then you can just sort of pull the knife off to the side like that and make some scores across the piece. And then what you'll find is it's easier to remove those sections one at a time. So still going along the line that you've just scored. Not a very good angle really. Let me just move the camera around so that I'm working um, behind this piece. And then you just go in around the shape again. This time you're sort of cutting out the sections one at a time. And you've just got to be really careful and do it a little bit at a time otherwise you'll split the wood the piece that you actually want to use and that can be really annoying especially if you're sort of quite far through the pattern when you've almost finished and then you split the molding it's so frustrating We're going to sand all of this, so don't worry if it doesn't look, you know, completely straight, which mine doesn't. We'll soon sort of smooth that up. And then I'm just going to go over that line again. And I'll cut a few sections. You know, and have a practice at this on spare pieces of wood. Doesn't matter what pattern you're doing, you know, just draw a curve straight onto the piece of wood and just have a practice because it's really good um, sort of technique for adding some nice finishing touches to pieces. And be careful as well, sort of when you're cutting, that you're not sort of cutting back across the piece you want to use. Oh, that's good. That whole section came out. I'll just tidy up that top. So that's the basic shape cut out. And then I'm just going to use a piece of fine grained sandpaper just to finish that off. So first of all smooth along the cut line. So straight along the top of the piece. So you've got a nice smooth edge. And then you can sort of round from back to front. So you're just sort of very gently rounding the top edge over. And just sweep your sandpaper from front to back. Did I say back to front a minute ago? <laughs> I meant front to back. And that just gives a neater edge. Like that. And again, you can then sand the piece all over just to prepare it for varnish or wood dye or paint. 
So that's the first coat now done and I just wanted to say that I paint inside um, cupboard openings but not right inside the drawer openings so I just sort of tend to do a line around the just around the inside edge of the drawer opening just so that there's no bare wood showing once the drawers are in place um, but I don't paint all the way inside because that can then affect the size of the drawer opening and you'll have to do a lot of sanding then to get the drawers back in so if you do ever want to paint inside those although there isn't really any reason to um, because you can't see once the drawers are in place but if you did do that first and then measure and cut your drawers so I'm now going to leave that to dry I shall then give it a gentle sand and I don't always do two coats if I've applied a sort of heavier coat for the first coat um, and I think it looks okay once I've sanded then I won't apply a second coat but if it looks a bit patchy then I always do a second coat to colour my top piece and moulding and the little back support I'm going to use a wood dye in light oak and I'll apply a couple of coats of this just to get a slightly richer colour and I've made a little masking tape handle here for the top piece and that's just because I want to get around that outside edge of the underside just because that will be visible once the piece is attached and then for these pieces I'll put on my latex gloves so that I don't get the wood dye on my fingers the painting and staining of all the parts is now complete, everything's dry and I've sanded all of the painted parts and refitted the drawers and doors and there was just a little bit of sanding required to get those to go back in nice and smoothly and you will find that after you've applied a coat of paint you may just need to sand a little bit away to get um, your drawers and doors back in. So that's all done and the next thing I want to do is attach the top to the unit. So I'm going to apply glue directly to the top of the unit. So spread that out, get him right along the edges and onto the top of those legs. And I've got a bit too much here, so I'm just going to scrape some off. I've got a piece of card here. I'm going to put that on. Oops. I don't want it to dribble down the side of the unit. And then bring in your top and remember you've got that straight edge along the back so you want that flush with the back of the legs like that just feel with your finger make sure that's flush at the back of the legs there and then also you want it sitting centrally so you've got an even overhang at each side and you can check that just by lifting it up and just seeing that you've got the same amount overhang in there at each side Straighten it up if you need to. And I'm just going to grab a, another cocktail stick and remove any excess glue. So I've got some pieces of masking tape already cut here. And I want to put a couple of pieces right over the top like that. Pull it nice and tight, and this is a low tack masking tape, so it shouldn't pull off any of the paint or the wood dye, but if it does, you can always just touch that in. Just tight there as well. And then I'm just going to turn that round, and do you see where you've just got a little bit of a lift at the back there? Always just check for that, and then you can just put a couple of bits of tape, in fact I'm going to tear that in half, just along that back edge or over that back edge. So again pull it nice and tight, like that. And if you follow my tutorials you'll know that I always say it, but it really is important to um, secure things like this, secure tops to units, otherwise you will get that lift in. And once the glue has dried you'll find that the gap in will just stay there. So it's always best to secure it at this stage. And then I like to use clamps along the front to get a really nice sort of tight grip along the front edge. And again, I've said it before, but fit on as many as you can. And I think I can get one more in there actually, in that wider central drawer opening. Just grab one from my toolbox. And 
can pop that in there. So that can now be left to dry. Pop that over there. And whilst that's drying, I'm going to fit the drawer pulls and the door handles. So we'll start with the drawers and I'm using these lovely antique brass drawer pulls and I really like these and I'm using the black ones in my own doll's house kitchen and they're nice and narrow sort of height wise so they really do look to scale on a piece of furniture so I'll just grab my smaller rule and we want to begin by making a pencil mark in the centre of the drawer across wise. So just do nice sharp pencil, just do a faint pencil line going that way. And then where you position these is up to you. You can have them in the centre if you like. As it's a pull rather than a, a sort of draw knob, I like to put them closer to the top. So then the next measurement we want to make is from the top of the drawer, depending on how far down you're going to have them. I think I'm going to go about 6mm down from the top of the drawer, and that's about a quarter of an inch. So then you can just do another little line going that way, so then you've got your centre and you've got where the top of the drawer knob should go. And then I'm just going to grab my tweezers, my sort of narrow end tweezers here, which are really handy for holding onto small components like this. And these can just be, oops, these can just be attached using your um, wood glue. So if you use the Gorilla wood glue like like I do, then you could use that, or any sort of PVA will work. So just apply a line like that in your drawer and then you want to just, you could sort of work out the centre of the um, top of the handle there and then you're just placing it below that little line you did um, 5 millimetres or 6 millimetres from the top. Put that into place and then look at it from the front just to make sure that it's straight. That's on there like that. And then the same with the other drawer. And for the doors I'm using these antique brass ring pull handles. And I'm going to put these directly in the centre of each door. And if you're using a handle that has a top and a bottom, as these do, then make sure you've got your doors the right way round, so that's the left and that's the right. And then to find, because I want to put them in the centre, I don't just want to do a pencil mark in the centre of the door, as I won't be able to see it when I come to position my um, handles. So what you want to do is measure um, the height of the handle, and these are round, so it's a 8mm diameter. But obviously if you've got a square handle or something, you'll need the height and the width. And then I'm going to make a pencil mark across the door first. So I want to find the centre and then deduct half of this measurement. So my centre would be at 12.5, but I want to deduct half of this, so that will be 4mm, measures 8mm across. So I would go to 8.5mm, and then I know that's where the side of the handle should be. So I'm making a little line there which I'll be able to see when I come to place the handle. And then I want to do the same again this way around. So I find the central measurement and then I deduct half of the height measurement of my handle. And I hope I'm explaining that okay. That'll be 18 that way. And that's where the top of my handle will sit. So if I had just done a pencil mark in the centre there, when I come to place my handle, I wouldn't be able to see it, so I wouldn't get an exact placement. So I can now see a pencil mark at the side and at the top. So I know how to place it. And again, you can use 
your wood glue or a PVA. And these are quite handy because they've got that little pull handle part to hold on to, so you don't need your tweezers. And then place your handle like that. Making sure, like I say, if there's a top that it's level with the top of the door. There's the handle, and then do the same thing with the remaining door again. Once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove your masking tape. And then I just very lightly sanded that top piece over, just to get rid of a few pulls that the masking tape had left. And I did a second coat of the wood, wood dye. We're now going to fit the doors, so bring in your dressmaking pins and you just want to press one into each of the drilled holes, so in the unit and in each of the doors. And that's just to remove any paint that may have seeped into those holes. And then into the top and bottom holes in both of the doors. Last one there. You can leave that one in there and then just pop a pin into each of the drilled holes in the doors and just very lightly press the top of the pin head down on your work surface and that will push it in as far as it will go but don't go too hard with that as you might find that it will split through the wood but we just want to make sure that they're in there as far as you've sort of drilled like that and then take your pliers or snippers and you want to trim the pin so it's about three millimeters or one eighth of an inch long and I know that by resting my pliers on top of the door and cutting that that gives me the three millimeters that I need But if you haven't got similar pliers to this, then you can just measure 3mm on the pin, make a little score with your knife, and then you can feel for that little score with the cutting part of your pliers. That's another way of, of doing it. And I'll start with that left-hand door, so remove the pin from the bottom. That's on your work surface there. And then you want to insert the top pin into that top hole push that in and then line the door up where it will actually sit like that make sure that's pushed right in so that the holes then that we've got here at the bottom are actually lined up and if your door's a little bit loose you can just hold onto it at the top and bottom like that but I like to leave mine so that they're quite tight I don't like them sort of falling inwards or, or outwards. And then this is the tricky bit, is actually then finding the hole in the bottom of the door. Now if you've lined them up properly, it should go in first go. Don't push it all the way in, and then you can just make sure that that actually opens. I was going to pull it with the handle then, but decided against it. So just make sure that the door opens nice and smoothly. It won't open all the way because of the moulding on the front there. Just make sure it opens and then you can push the pin all the way in. And I always advise that just because once you've put the pin in, you can't get it out. <laughs> so if your door didn't open, and you just have to leave it, leave it so that it didn't open. So again, with the remaining door, remove that bottom pin. Insert the top pin. Put your door into position, and this one was a little bit tighter. And then push the bottom pin sort of halfway in. Test that the door is opening. I'm going to have to use the handle just because it's a little bit tight, but then I'll do it like that. 
yeah, that's a nice sort of smooth opening there. And then you can push the pin all the way in. Now, if the pin doesn't go in um, that first time like that, don't worry, just keep moving your door around just until you really line up those holes. And if you remember, we did put the door in and then make the pin mark, so we know that it is in the right place, so just persevere with it and it will go in. But that, that was lucky, it doesn't always go in um, the first time like that. So let's put some of these drawers in. And that's why I've used that um, 25 millimeter thick sheet there for the shelf so that the pin can then go into the shelf. If you were using a thinner piece of wood there, you would use what I call a draw stop, a thicker piece of wood there that you would then drill the hole into and your pin would then sit in that rather than in that thicker piece of wood. And again, I left my drawers a little bit tighter as well, just because I like them to have a nicer sort of fit. One of these is wider, so which was it? Yep. Goes in there. And I really like that with the different sort of drawer handles and door handles. I really like how that makes it look. So all we have to do now is attach the top moulding and we're going to attach that right along the back of the top piece so that it's flush at the back there. And then we've got our little support here, so once that's in place we'll be gluing that along the join. But I just wanted to point out that we need to just take the corners off of this back piece. But let's get this piece glued into place first. I've got a piece of card here, but I'm just going to pop a little bit more glue on it. Find the nicest side um, of your moulding. And I think that's mine. And you want that then facing towards the front. Again, just one of those little habits to get into. Always be looking for the nicest side, which will be your visible side. Use your thumb to make sure that you've got a nice flush edge along the back there. Press that into place, make sure it's not curling inwards at the ends, which it will do because it's thinner at the ends. Hold that into place for a moment, like that. Let's have a look at that from the front. So our support piece is going to sit along the back edge of the top piece. So you don't want it overhanging the legs like that. We just want it along that back piece. But we don't want it overhanging so that it can be seen from the front. So what we then need to do, let's pull that in a little bit, is trim away these top corners. So if I just use my pencil there to follow round it might be that your moulding is higher at the end, you might have chose a different pattern, that's why I cut it like this in the first place. But if you have got anything overlapping then you'll need to remove it, so just follow around the line of your moulding. And it doesn't have to be exact, but it's just so that you're below that and you're not going to see the support. And then you can just snip that piece away, Let's move those out of the way. And I'm not going to score the line or anything because this doesn't have to be super neat because it's not um, visible. Just like that, so you're just sort of cutting away the corners. Like that. And you can just gently sand that. Even though it's not visible, we still like to be neat. And then just double check 
that you haven't got anything visible from the front. Just line it up like that with the bottom of that back piece, the top piece, sorry. And yeah, and then you can glue that into place. So just make sure you're lined up with the bottom of the top piece along the top edge of the legs like that so we're right across the join and this is just working as a as a support now this top molding I'm not sure if I said earlier or not but of course it is optional you might just want to have that plain top piece I think this adds quite a nice little feature to it right, so press that into place like that and I'm just going to turn that around and grab a clean cocktail stick I just want to go along that front just to make sure there was no glue residue and then I'm going to now give that a second coat of wood stain as well just so that it matches exactly with this top and to cover those little areas that we sanded or cut and sanded away um, on our support piece so I'm just going to do that and there is the completed piece I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, if so please give the video a thumbs up and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please do as there's lots more to come. If you'd like to be notified whenever I upload a video hit the notification bell below. If you enjoy making your own doll's house furniture and miniatures you might like my books. I've published four of them so far and they're all available to purchase from Amazon. Just search for Julie Warren. And for now, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.